Hi, uh, the topic of this video is scalar triple product. Uh, that is a very important topic for JE. Uh, I'll probably say this is the most important topic for JE, more than cross product, more than dot product, because this combines both cross product and dot product. Uh, there are a lot of questions which come in JE just based on scalar triple product. Uh, it is a very, very important concept, uh, and I hope that this video will be able to give you a very, very good example of basic understanding of scalar triple product. Uh, the idea behind this video would be to first introduce scalar triple product to you and then do a few problems on uh, on this topic. After that, there will be also a follow-up video in which we will go over more examples of scalar triple product. Okay. Uh, so, what is a scalar triple product? Till now, we have done dot product which was A dot B. Uh, then we have done cross product which was A cross B. Now, this is a scalar triple product. So, the name suggests the triple means there are three quantities vector A, vector B, vector C and it is scalar product. Like dot product was a scalar product, similarly this is also a scalar product, but it is a scalar triple product. So, there will be three vector quantities A, B and C and the output would be a scalar. Okay. So, let us first discuss how we can get a scalar quantity out of three vectors. So, let us say we have vector A and we have vector B and we have vector C. Now, how can I get a scalar quantity out of this. Can I do a dot b dot c? So, this would mean that and let me put brackets here. If I do this, then this would mean a dot b is a scalar quantity, then I cannot dot it with c. Okay? So, this is not possible. Can I do a cross b cross of c? This would mean that there is a, this is a vector quantity and then I am taking a vector cross another vector that will give me a vector output. This unit is this operation is not possible. This would give me a vector output. But we want a scalar output. So, this is also not possible. We will also be discussing what kind of product is this, but that is a part of the next video. But this will give me a vector output. So, this is not good for us. However, can we do something like this a cross b dot c. This is a vector then dotted with a vector and this gives a scalar output. This is a correct. Okay, So, this is what we want to know. So, scalar triple product is defined as A cross B dotted with C. Okay. So, what does this mean? What does this mean? This means that if I know I know what is This is dotted with right. So, how can we then get the answer if you basically do this? The expansion would be something like this. can imagine that basically you have to you will find i component and then multiply all of that with cx. So, rather than doing ijk separately you can just put cx cy cz in the determinant at the top. Okay. So, this is an important property here which I have written down. Now, okay, you have your first dot a dotting a cross b with uh, a cross b dot c. Now, can you see something else also which might or might not be that obvious? Basically, we know that we know that a cross b 
dotted with C is equal to C dot A cross B, right? So, A cross B dot C is equal to C cross A dot B. We know that because this is a dot product. This is a vector. So, you just took the vector. This let us say this let us call this vector D. Then D dot C is equal to C dot D, right? So, all you all you are saying is A cross B dot C is equal to C cross C C dot A cross B. We know this, okay? Also, there are some properties of determinant, which basically means that you can flip two determinants, uh, and then the answer would become a negative of that. And if you flip twice, then the answer would remain the same. So, if you think, if I flip A and C, then A will come to the top, and C will come to the bottom. Then if I fli flip uh, flip uh, A and B, then B will come to the middle, and uh, B and sorry. So we'll first flip A and C, and then flip B and C. So it will become A B C. In other words, A cross B dotted with C can also be A X A Y A Z, B X B Y B Z, C X C Y C Z. And this I have done by flipping row twice, flipping C row and A row, and then B row and C row. You will get this. However, if you think about this. Here, whatever was in the dot came at the top. Now, if I want to write this down, now I can write this also as a dot b cross c. Okay, a dot b cross c. So, what was what what I have what I have done here? What I am saying is, whatever was in the dot came at the top row. So, whatever was in the dot came at the top row. A single vector came at the top row. Now, I have written this down. So a cross b dot c is equal to a dot b cross c, and this is a super important property. Like a cro a cross b dot c is equal to a dot b cross c. In other words, you can flip the sign of a and b. So the first property that we have discussed was this. Okay, and the second property that I want to discuss is that I want to highlight is this a cross b a cross b dot c is equal to a dot b cross c. Third property. So a cross A dot B cross C is equal to A dot A cross B dot C, and sometimes this is written as A B C. Okay. Sometimes this is written as A A B C because dot and cross doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You are taking dot here or cross here. It will always come out to be fine. It will always be the same. Okay. So I hope that this is making sense. That we first said this is a determinant, and then we flipped the rows so that the value remains the same. And then because the top row was a dot dot alone vector, then we said a dot b cross c. So a cross b dot c is same as a dot b cross c. Okay. Uh, and we also know that a cross b dot c is equal to c cross. C. And we also know that know that this is the same as because this is a cross b dot c. So we can also write this as. C dot A cross B, right? So we can or C cross A dot B, right? This can also be written, or this this can also be C A B, because now we are taking the associative property of dot. Similarly, now I can write this as B dot C cross A. I am taking the property of I am flipping dots here again and equal to uh, now I am changing um, writing this as b cross c dot a changing dot and cross and this is b c a okay this is a very very important property what what I am trying what I am trying to say here is a cross b dot c so I hope this makes sense you can change dot and cross one thing. And then it, this is, seems to be a cyclic property. The cyclic property says that A should go to B, and then B should go to C, and C should go to A. 
So what is happening is A, B, C, A, B and then C. So you can always think of it in a cyclic, A, B, C. So the, the cycle is always A, B, C and that is that means if as long as you have A, B, C written in the correct cycle, then the value remains the same. In other words, A, B, C is equal to C, A, B is equal to B, C, A and I just want to highlight one thing in after that that this is equal to minus of a c b. So if you flip two things, so rather so the cycle has broken now, it is not a b c, it is a c b. So you have broken the cycle and you have reversed the cycle. So rather than a b c, you are now going a c b. So that's why you have a negative sign. And you can check that, that if you flip just two rows, just b and c, only one row if you, like if you exchange one time, then there is a negative sign in front of the determinant. So that is why there is a negative sign here. And now here you can again make the cycle. That this is equal to minus B A C. Again the cycle is now A C B, not A B C. And is equal to minus C B A. Okay. So this is a very, very important property. I hope that you are able to now understand what we are doing. So we we'll discussed a lot of things very quickly. One thing that this is a scalar product, A cross B dot C is a scalar product, A cross because A cross B is a vector and then you are dotting it with C. And then uh, the second thing we discussed was you can flip the sign of dot and cross. That is because whenever, when in, through the determinant property I showed that when you flip twice, you can basically see that A cross B dot C is equal to A dot B cross C. In the third property you said there is a cyclic property to the whole system and that we saw by exchanging the dot and cross that you, uh, sorry by exchanging like using the property of dot product that a cross b dot c is equal to c dot a cross b so there are a lot of things here so a you should take some time to just digest these things because these things will be used in and out and they are very very important for the chapter of vectors so please please take your time to understand these things just very slowly go through like writing these equations and then you should be able to understand this i don't think this is a very very difficult concept to grasp but once you have but for once you have to really understand it okay so two things you can exchange the sign of dot and cross and then there is a cyclic property and for a dot b cross c you can just use a determinant okay you can use a determinant now the next thing that i want to discuss like all uh, other products is the physical significance is the physical significance and what the what is the physical significance of a cross b dot c so what we basically we have to realize is that this condition a dot b cross c if this is 0 then then a b c are co coplanar are coplanar and I want to prove so I have written it the so this is the first part of the significance and I want to stress on this quite a lot because this is something which you will use again a lot in questions so what does this mean how what does this mean so let us say you have two vector b and c b and c here then b cross c so two vectors are always coplanar okay so if you have two vectors like this let us say you have two vectors like this then you can always pass a plane through them right like you can always pass a plane through these two vectors so b and c are vectors two vectors and then you, you have passed a plane through them then there is a perpendicular vector b cross c is a vector perpendicular to both b and c this is something we have discussed in cross product so if you are not if you cannot recall it please go and check back the notes on cross product that whenever there is b cross c the vector which is let us say n is perpendicular to both b and c now what we are saying is that this n vector is perpendicular to the plane of b and c now a dot n because b cross c is n because b cross c here we are saying let us say b cross c is n a dot n is 0 a dot n is 0 what does the, this mean that a and n are perpendicular now so if a and n are perpendicular to now then a has to lie in the plane a has to lie in the plane of b and c so this means that a has to lie in the plane of b and c or a b c are coplanar 
and what does coplanar mean coplanar means that if there are three vectors you can pass a, a plane through them okay so two vectors you can always pass a plane through them but if there are three vectors let's say there are two vectors like this and one vector one vector like like this you cannot pass a plane through them only two vectors you can pass a plane but if there are three vectors you can not always pass a plane through them and when can you pass a plane through them whenever a dot b cross c is zero or the scalar triple product is zero and how are we explaining this we are saying that b cross c is a plane is a vector which is perpendicular to both b and c or the is perpendicular to the plane of b and c and when a dot n is zero that means a and b cross c are perpendicular because a dot product is zero when our two vectors are perpendicular so that forces a has to lie in the plane of b and c okay this is very very important and I, i mean you just have to just remember this that whenever you see that two vectors are coplanar just very uh, you should remember that the scalar triple product is zero also you should remember this that coplanarity also means coplanarity also means that you can re represent the third vector as a linear combination of the first two vectors that is also a way to understand coplanarity what is coplanarity so when will this happen when can you represent a vector as two com two ve as some uh, linear combination of a and b so let us say there is a and b and there is a plane which passes through them then you are saying that you are stretching one vector or doing something to the, the on a, like stretch l and m like could be anything any uh, any real values let us say you made one vector half other vector double and then now you are adding them so you will basically be completing some sort of some sort of addition and addition forces you to not leave that plane so that is why that these three things are coplanar and you can also imagine if you have if i put uh, c is equal to la plus mb here right uh, la plus mb here c here as la plus mb then if i take cross of b with b it will become zero right uh, and then it will basically become a dot b cross a right a dot b cross a and then you can flip dot and cross dot and cross and it will become uh, a cross a dot b and dot cross of a with a will also be zero i mean you can check you can just put it back here and check yourself that this will always come out to be zero so coplanarity also and you can also understand that coplanarity means that one vector can be written as a linear combination of the other two vectors and that abc is the scalar triple product abc is zero so i hope that uh, this is sort of giving some insight to you what does scalar triple product mean so dot product was the projection uh, of a vector on the other cross product was a vector perpendicular to the both the vectors and scalar triple product equal to zero means a condition of for coplanarity okay second thing that i just want you to learn as a formula that is more like a formula that if there is a parallelepiped what is a parallelepiped is like a it's like a rectangle but rather than having perpendicular sides uh it is just parallel so it's like a 3d parallelogram okay 3d parallelogram and the volume of uh, volume of parallelepiped it is abc if the three sides are a vector b vector c vector then the volume of parallelepiped is abc there are a lot of proofs for this i don't think you need to really understand the proofs so this is like a vector is this entire side c vector is and this entire side b vector is this entire side then the volume of parallelepiped is abc okay and uh, if there is a tetrahedron if there is a tetrahedron so i'm just right with three sides abc then tetrahedron would be abc by 6 okay 
so i mean if it's a little bit unclear to you just do not worry too much about this just uh, go back and look at some images of tetrahedra and parallelepiped and just remember that the side whenever sides are a b and c then the volume of parallelepiped is abc and volume of tetrahedron is abc by 6 okay so we have discussed again now let us recap whatever we have discussed so this is this ends the property discussion of uh, property discussion of uh, the the scalar triple product and what we have discussed is if a dot b cross c we can write it as a determinant okay uh, then we also uh, also learned that you can flip dot and cross and that is i showed that by if you flip to twice uh, scalar uh, determinant twice then you can get the same sign and that hence a cross b is equal to a dot b cross c then we learned about the cyclic property of abc and that there will be a minus sign whenever the cycle is broken or becomes reverse and then we discussed two things about physical significance condition for coplanarity means that one vector is a linear combination of the other, other two vectors and that is also expressed in terms of a dot b cross c is equal to 0 because b cross c is a vector perpendicular to the plane of b and c and if a dot that a dot n is 0 that means a has to lie in the plane of b and c and finally if abc are sides of parallelepiped and tetrahedron then the vol volume is abc and abc by 6 okay so these are the properties that we have discussed please remember them learn them they should be on your fingertips whenever you see them okay so now let us try to let us try to do some very quick problems uh, small problems and the problems are first problem so let me create some clear demarcation so the problem first problem is if a b c r if a b c r coplanar if a b c r coplanar what is the value of what is the value of 2a minus b to b minus c and 2c minus a okay so they have been, we have been told that there are three vectors abc which are coplanar and then we have been asked to find the what the value of some scalar triple product of linear combination of a and b and c so there is one way to solve this problem is that you take the cross of this so i mean you can just start taking cross and then taking dot and then trying to find something in terms of a b and c but my point here is really to make you understand what what this means so think think about three vectors think about three vectors let's say a b and c and they are coplanar uh, and they are coplanar so if you have uh, two vectors like this and you have the third vector like this they they are in a plane now what you are doing is you are just taking a linear combination of these three vectors can you ever go out of the plane can you ever create a vector which is out of the plane so for instance if c is la plus mb because abc are coplanar that means la plus mb then 2a minus b is a linear combination of a and b 2b minus c because c is la plus mb is also a linear combination of a and b and 2c minus a is also a linear combination of a and b so even all these three vectors are just linear combination of a and b so that means that they are in the same plane so you don't even need to do anything you don't even have to calculate you can just directly write that this is equal to 0 because if abc are coplanar then any linear combination of these vectors would also lie in the same plane so these three vectors are just in the same plane so you don't even need to worry about it you just have to understand okay these three vectors are coplanar so any linear combination of them has to be coplanar so that means this is 0 which is a condition of scalar triple product so i can bet that a lot of students here will try to solve this problem they will they will start with abc is 0 and then they will expand this using taking a cross here and a dot here and then opening up the brackets and then trying to solve it somehow but you don't even have to you just have to understand that coplanarity means that the three three vectors are in the same plane or they can be expressed as a linear combination of each other and any vector will also lie in the same plane okay so i hope that this gives you some insight about scalar triple product
okay the second problem that i want to do is that what is the value of lambda lambda such that lambda i plus j plus k comma i plus 2 lambda j plus k cap and i plus j plus k are coplanar okay so what is the value of lambda such that these three vectors are coplanar the question is begging you would say remember the condition of coplanarity the condition of coplanarity is a dot b cross c is zero that's it so what how can you write a dot b cross c is that we have discussed it is a determinant so let us call this a vector b vector and c vector then a dot b cross c is equal to lambda so just take the coefficients lambda 1 1 1 to lambda one and one 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 and you have to make this equal to zero okay and if you you should be now i hope with time you will be become you will become very quick with uh, taking uh, opening up determinants uh, and if you open up the determinant you will actually find that this is 2 lambda square minus 3 lambda plus 1 equal to 0 you can check that this is what it comes out and that would give you the answer at lambda equal to 1 comma half so this again in an objective type problem this could be a multiple choice problem and can we check can we check the answer if we what is lambda equal to 1 mean so what does lambda equal to 1 and half mean here okay so if lambda is equal to 1 then this becomes i plus j plus k and this becomes i plus j plus k so they are the same vector so if they are the same vector then that means that their cross will always be zero so if they are the same vector then basically this becomes two vectors which can which can always uh which will obviously be coplanar so rather than three vectors if their two vectors are same basically you are saying that there are only two vectors which are always coplanar if lambda is half then this becomes i plus j plus k so and then these two become same so again they become two vectors and they are always coplanar okay so i hope that with this you are able to physically also understand the meaning of scalar triple product so in this video we covered very important topic of scalar triple product we discussed its properties we discussed four properties and then we did two examples to understand what is the meaning of scalar triple product and how to apply it in the next video we will be discussing vector triple product uh, and i hope you enjoyed this video please check out the next video thank you